I'm just here to have a little fun, speculate on the future, and kind of reflect on the past of Kubernetes, GitOps, and where we are today. Um, I should take off my mask before I do that, though. There we go. So, um, yeah, the future is declarative. I would say the future is now, based on what I've seen today. But uh, let's dive in and, and uh, reflect. So, I'm sure most of you are familiar with these logos. Um, Kubernetes Docker, for sure. We, um, we all know and love them. Uh, we're all familiar with Kubernetes because it made it possible for us to orchestrate containers, and Docker made it possible to easily build them for app developers. Um, so these were kind of a genesis set of technologies, I would say, to got us where we are today. Um, they basically made managing infrastructure and orchestrating containers accessible to the masses. Uh, you build your container using Docker or maybe Podman now. I'm, red, I'm a Red Hat, so I have to mention Podman. Um, uh, you design, you design uh, your, uh, or sorry, you define your desired state in a uh, declarative fashion, which we all like because we're Argonauts here today. Um, and then you apply it to your Kubernetes API server with kubectl. Um, and then Kubernetes will re reconcile that state and make sure uh, you have the correct number of pods uh, and the correct uh, version of the pod or container image uh, running. So it's kind of magic, right? It's kind of amazing you can just declare something in a text file or a YAML file, and it's suddenly available on three nodes in a cloud and highly available. Um, so I think it's worth reflecting on that and how far we've come to get there. So I think we can all say we really, really like this. It gives us superpowers, and um, it's kind of abstracted things in such a fantastic way that we can deploy more efficiently. But it's not all fun and games, right? You think, oh, I have Kubernetes, I have, I have, I have Argo, I have Git, um, I have Docker, I have all these amazing technologies. I'll have five nines of uptime. No downtime ever, um, but the reality is uh, often not quite the case, right? So you think you're going to be, you know, the guy on the left, uh, but actually you're the guy on the right cowering and screaming about etcd and, uh, I don't know, some of your Kubernetes nodes being down. And that's why companies like these came along and started offering managed Kubernetes, right? Kubernetes, managing it is not your, uh, it's not your main job. Your main job is to deliver value to your customers, and using Kubernetes is a means to an end. So using managed Kubernetes is probably something lots of people in this room do, but it still doesn't solve all your problems. There's tons of work to do. You have to configure, uh, manage your deployments, do audits, rollback, logging, observability, all these other things that I couldn't fit on this slide. Uh, so we're all super busy and we need more help. And then Argo came along and helped with some of that, right? It helped with a lot of it actually. Um, so we're using Argo, Customize, Helm, all these other technologies to make sure our Kubernetes clusters are actually in the state we told them to be in, because we, we get sloppy, right? We run commands and we accidentally run them on prod and then everything's broken. So Kubernetes with Argo has uh, helped avoid that drift. Um, and we even went further, right? So we all know the default CRDs in Kubernetes are amazing, but we can do better. So we decided to extend Kubernetes uh, with our own CRDs, right? So you can you know, do that with Argo, right? You have the application CRD. You can do it with Kafka, um, uh, the Strimzy operator. So obviously, again, I'm with Red Hat, so I have to mention the operator framework, which came from CoreOS. Um, and it allows you to do fantastic things, like create your own custom controllers, run them on Kubernetes, and keep your app application in a desired state, or do uh, installs, which is a day one type operation, and then upgrades as part of your day two activities. So one of my favorite examples, actually, before I move on, so we enhanced Cube. Uh, so yeah, Kube by default is probably already like the one on the right, but we made it even bigger and better. Um, so yeah, you can take uh, something like a Kafka cluster, define it again in YAML, and suddenly you have a highly available Kafka cluster running across multiple nodes in your Kubernetes cluster. Um, and you can change uh, the settings, uh, you know, the number of uh, uh, gigabytes assigned to those uh, brokers, easily using a declarative interface with YAML. And you can even go as far as managing off-cluster resources now using things like Crossplane. So maybe people are using Crossplane with Argo um, to manage, I don't know, S3 buckets or SQS queues or SNS queues or the equivalent in whatever your preferred cloud vendor's environment is. So we've gone from managing Kubernetes to managing things off of Kubernetes, and I think it's, it's pretty amazing. So the question is, uh, what now? And I think you know, we've seen a lot of today. <laughs> so today we've seen a lot of what now, or now what. Uh, I think it's amazing seeing NUMA project, observability and AI tools. I think the future is pretty bright looking for Argo and the community. 
Um, and I would like to see GitOps becoming even more adopted. When I interact with cloud vendors, you know, I use a CLI. I don't use declarative fashion to interact with them often. I do it with my Kubernetes cluster on the vendor, but I use a CLI for the getting started piece. So maybe in the future, we'll, uh, we'll use GitOps to actually interface directly with services that aren't just Kubernetes. I don't know, speculation. Um, and that's it, I'm out of time. So I'll say thank you very much for listening. And I hope we've all had fun at ArgoCon. I know I did. Check out uh, developers.redhat.com, and uh, I'll talk to you all soon.